Um, it is Friday, um, April 12th at um, 3.05 p.m. Uh, that's April 12th, 2024. The Board of Commissioners of the Hardwick Electric Department is meeting. Uh, all commissioners are present um, as are Beth Essery, David Upson, and Ken Nolan. Um, the agenda item on the uh, the item on the agenda is uh, management planning. Uh, are there any changes to the agenda? If not, then we'll go forward on that basis. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure what the best place to start is. It seems to me that um, we need to talk about staffing needs. If there, you know, if there are things that need to be done uh, that anybody is aware of that nobody is doing right now, um, I think that's something that we need to know. Um, if, if there were any projects ongoing that we don't know about um, and what the best way to find out about these things are. Um, and I've, I'm completely open to any suggestions that anybody else has as to, you know, how we might proceed with this. Well, Lynn, I think the way you described it was really helpful. Um, you know, there's sort of ongoing daily operations at the utility, and Beth probably has a pretty good perspective for that. And then special, pro you know, projects is probably another way to look at and that. We may be reliant on a wider <laughs> range of people. Beth or others might have a perspective on projects. And then anything coming at us beyond that, we've got the legal track but I don't think any of that is hurt. We have to make sure we're on top of You're breaking um, up. Uh, oh, I think, Mike, Michael, can you put yourself on mute? Um, because I think we're getting background noise from the car, and I can't make out what Roger's saying. Yeah. Thank yep, you. Hang on. Roger, can you say again? I heard legal. Yeah, so maybe. Uh, you could probably tell I was thinking while I was talking, which is usually a bad policy, but the um, we've got day-to-day -day operations and we've got projects and then we've got legal or other, um, I don't know what you put in that basket, Ken might be able to help us, but things like if we're going for a rate increase or we're, we have some other filings or or compliance steps that we have to take care of. And, and that the sort of legal and compliance isn't moving at a breakneck speed, I don't think, but we could identify if there's anything near term that we have to take care of. And then I guess um, also in that basket is the financing, right? So any yes. of the tracks we were going down to make sure we had the loans or the, you know, we had the financing to, to, to do the things we were, we had in motion. Is yep. that helpful? Yep. That's just basically re recycling back to you what I heard you say. Yeah, well, I think some of the items, I mean, for example, the most immediate thing on financing is the loan extension, and that's on our agenda for Monday. Great. So I think everything is set up for that. It's a case of of, of having a resolution. So that's the easy bit. Yep. Um, and then I guess in our discussion today, I might suggest, Lynn, if, if you're okay with it, is you know, Ken is probably the person on the call here who's observed municipal utilities going through general manager changes the most. And maybe you can say, hey, this is what I've observed. You know, this is this is uh, things to watch out for. Here's here's what worked. Here's what didn't work. Work. Here's what BEPSA can do. Is that a reasonable place to get a tutorial? <laughs> That might be putting more burden on Ken than he wants, but I, I, I mean, I think that, and also, um, I think that that Ken may have some sensitivity to things that we may be missing, that that things that you know we should be prepared to be dealing with, or or finding someone to be dealing with, um, and I had also um, 
spoken with Ken yesterday and had asked if he could uh, speak to some of the other VEPSA members and see if there are ways that um, they can be assisting us. Yeah. So maybe maybe it makes sense to, um, I, I guess I would like to hear from Beth if there are any things that she's particularly concerned about um, and things that she thinks that we need to be aware of. Um, my, uh, what's at the top of my priority list is that Mike had, or the general manager had full approval on all invoices, regardless of the amount. Also, any checks over $5,000 required two signatures. I am one authorized signature. So, um, things that have come across my desk that I would like direction on is I feel comfortable approving invoices that are what I call standard invoices, monthly invoices, even though some of them are over 5,000. Um, I feel comfortable, but I need, I need someone to say, yes, Beth, take care of that. And we need a second signature authorized on the checking accounts as well. Okay. Um, does it make sense to go through items, or I think I think we need to sort of take care of things to the extent that we can, and maybe this is one that we can at least come up with something on an interim basis. Um, I mean, invoices need to be paid. When, when, so what are the kinds of things that, that are coming in that, that you're uncomfortable with? Are, are they things for like, and one of the questions that I had is what the status is of the repair on Woolkit, because that's a big project. And I don't know whether there's anybody who had much visibility on it other than Mike. I'm not aware of anyone having any information really other than Mike. I know I personally do not. I don't know what the status of that is. Okay. Do we do we have do you have the names of contact people at who are at the contractor level, you know, who are working on it that we can even find somebody who's who's competent um, to be talking with them because that's a project that's in midstream that we're gonna have to deal with and, and we do need to get it back online. I do have the actual contracts that he signed. So there, I'm sure there's contacts on those contracts themselves. So we could, we could search that down to get an actual contact at the vendor. Okay, that would, that, would, that, would be, that would be good. Are there invoices coming in on that? Are those, so, so are, what are the sort of irregular invoices that are? Yeah, they're actually regular. It's just that they're normally over $5,000 each month. For instance, um, to pay our software vendor, that's eight to 10,000 a month. Um, when we pay, you know, we collect the NIPA block through our, custom, through our customer's bills. To turn around and give that check back and stake, that's about $30,000 a month. But it's just a monthly thing. It's not unusual. It's just a regular recurring amount that's over what I look at the $5,000 limit. Okay. My suggestion, and I, do, I don't know how the other commissioners feel about it. Would, and since we have a meeting on Monday, and I'm, I'm guessing that there are invoices like that that need to be paid right now, would be that if you could make up a list of what those items are, the amounts and what they're for, um, and circulate that to the commissioners, and then we could take it up at our meeting on Monday and you know, if we have any questions, we can ask questions and then we can approve that so that that takes care of one piece, you know, the approval part. Um, and, and then I guess the other issue that you said is, is the signatory. Uh, yes. And I, I, I don't have a, a good suggestion on, on who that what, is, um, what does the town do, Opie? 
on signature authority because I think all organizations are advised by their auditors these days to have that sort of dual signature. Certainly so, in the business world, that's true. Yeah, so a select board member and myself signed the check warrants. Okay. And then um, our business manager and prepares the invoices and our treasurer signs off on the invoices. Mm -hmm. On the signs the checks. Mm -hmm. So a member of the select board is mm -hmm. going to sign check warrants. So it sounds, Lynn, it sounds like, Lynn, it's, it, it'd have to be a little more organized and coordinated than Beth's used to. But um, it sounds like we could work it if she could just collect them and then we could orchestrate someone. Of course, we'd always probably vote you you to do it, but we could back you up too. I, I, think, I, think, I think we can authorize as a board mm -hmm. any one of the because we all have different schedules yeah um right. and it's a case of who may be available when things need mm -hmm. to be signed mm -hmm. so if it's beth and and whomever and we've approved everything that's over five mm -hmm. and we go over the statements anyway so that if there's something even on on lower amounts occasionally we've we've asked questions about them when they've yeah. just seemed when we didn't understand and you'll just before. you'll just have to bear with us beth that it'll mean you can't just present us with the check you'll have to have a little information about sure it's too, but. sure so i can get the documents from the bank <laughs> to make the signatures authorized signatures on the account and i can have them there monday night great okay uh, yeah if you have those at, at the meeting then we can all sign as, yeah. as signatories and then uh we go from there unless somebody has a i don't know that do we that we need motion on this does anybody <laughs> think that we need a, a that's probably not a bad idea but we can do that at the meeting on monday when we actually authorize people to sign yeah let's plan on it um because as I recall, having done signatures with, with Union Bank, Union Bank is likely to have a whole slew of resolutions that they want um, as part of it. So we're gonna have to adopt their resolutions. Um, and I just wanna let you know that the funding from Vermont Bank, we actually got the funds in the bank. Oh, that's great. great. That's great. Terrific, nice and, job and, on that. Yeah, so if you could bring the forms along with the resolutions, because I, I know they're there. I just had to do some <laughs> with another organization. Uh, okay, was Beth, did you have any other things? Um, you know, are you aware of any particular staffing issues, whether it's in the office or otherwise? Um, well, I think we all kind of know what the outside office is, but uh, inside, we're we're fine. I've got a great staff. One one thing that I would find helpful: can you make up a list of all of the staff mm -hmm. and what their positions are, and and contact information for for in you know both in the office and and for and for the crew, and and circulate that to the board as well. Sure. So, so if, if you don't have anything else, Beth, I, I mean, I guess the next thing is projects. And I guess Brian is the person who's going to know the most about them. Uh, I, I don't know how much he knows, but I think he would be the first person to ask. Yeah. Um, I don't know what people's schedule is. Who's the best? Who the best person to do that is? Um... Would it? Would, this might be a crazy idea, but would it? Would it make sense um, 
to to ask Brian to come to at least a portion of the the meeting on Monday night to help us just talk through the field operations so. and I you know so. he he could express directly to okay. us you know what did Mike do for him what gap what void is left what can he pick up comfortably what's he uncomfortable with what can we do now can might modify that with some of what he's experienced with others but without ken's input i said you know we might as well hear from brian i, th I think that's i think that but, makes a lot of sense okay beth could you get in touch with him and ask him yes come to the meeting um, on And if the time is 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 an issue, I mean, we can put him on the agenda, you know, at a time that that works for him. So, I mean, if he wants to do it right at four, that's fine. Or, you know, if 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 four thirty or five or five thirty is better for him, that's that's okay too. Okay. Um. In terms of legal, I sent Eli. Um, an email this morning. I haven't heard back from him. Um, you know, asking if there were. Well, maybe we add Eli to Monday. See if he. Can... Yeah, I know. Well, and I and I and I and I did mention that to him. Um, so, um, what's weird is I'm just looking at my sent mail and I'm not seeing an email to Eli. I thought I sent an email to Eli. That's very, very odd. Okay. Um, in any case, I will send an email to him and ask, make sure, you know, make sure that he can that he can join us. Um, I don't think that there's anything on on the litigation. Um, Beth circulated something from Mike that uh, I think is the last update. Beth, do you know whether or not he's spoken with 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 Brooke or with um, Scott? No, ma'am, I sure don't. Okay. There was, yeah, there was a bit of a report from. There was something from Brooke, but 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 both of them should be aware that that he's he's resigned. I will I'll get in touch with with both of them, because we do have um, the union contract coming up. Yep. I'm just writing myself a note. Well, while you're doing that, I'm back. I'm sorry, I disconnected. So one quick thing you may have discussed this when I was off the phone. In order for somebody else to sign the checks, Beth, we have to get approval from the bank. Yes. So Beth. Well, we don't need to get approval from the bank. The bank, we, the bank. Need more signatures. The bank's going to need signatures, and they're going to need to know that the board, that the board of commissioners has authorized the signatories by passing certain right. resolutions. So Beth's going to have all of that at our meeting on Monday, so that we can okay. so deal with it. If you already discussed it, that's fine. I'll catch up. <laughs> I said no. If you went over it, okay. Yeah. So I think that to summarize that, what I heard is rather than relaxing the requirement of dual signatures, we're simply finding a way to do it using the commissioners. And a, a precedent is, you know, what Ollie does with the town in checks to maintain dual signing is they have the select board members as dual signatories. Yep. So I think we're going to adopt that approach for the moment rather My, than loosening it. I think, you know, I think it's well established in our own history, yeah. in particular, the importance of keeping dual signatures. Yeah. Michael, you're, you, if I recall what you had told me, you're, you're going to be out of town come Monday. You're not going to be at the meeting in person. Um, no, no, I'm in Monday and then I'm gone for two weeks after that. Right, so great. So you'll be able to sign on, on, mon on Monday. That's, that's terrific. Yeah. Um, So, I mean, the other thing, 
and and this is really um ken probably knows more about this than anyone but as i recall we need to be doing a new integrated resource plan this year um and i i don't know what the timing on that is or where things stand or you've got you've got some time <clears throat> it's it's um uh, it's due in the fall <clears throat> and we've been asking for extensions our uh, Heather, our main power supply person, is out on maternity leave, and we've been using that as a reason to ask for pushing out for a few months. So that's nothing you need to worry about right away. Okay, that's that's. Um, I I, th I think you know we go on to sort of the um, I think before we get into into hearing from Ken. Um, I'm wondering if there are things that we need to be doing from a community relations, a customer relations standpoint. Um, and, and I guess that with Mike's departure and, and I, I defer to Opie. He has some insights on that. Um, yeah, so I would suggest um, a uh, message from the commissioner going to the entire HEB staff needs to happen ASAP. Um, and then also I'm getting media inquiries uh, from the local paper. So somebody should probably reach out to the editor of the paper and comment. I'll call it better, but I would say the paper you're talking the, you're talking to Paul at the at the Gazette. There's a lot of rumors swirling around town right now, so the best thing to do would be get get the messaging out. Okay, well, then, then the question is what and and is there anyone? Who, um, the messaging generic. Yeah, yeah. No, I I guess I guess the question. Well, I think I think. For, and ensure the public that nothing's going to change with the electricity. But nothing's changing, yeah. Yeah. Just something simple and correct. Anybody want to volunteer to take a crack at that? If if you like, I'll I'll go ahead and try. Let's see. I'm 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 of the mind to make it. Two or three sentences. That's that's fine, and I'm happy to take a, a, a you know we can just we can take a look at it after you craft something. Okay. But okay. I think I think it's I think that's right. I guess does do you think we need to have a meeting with the staff? And that's really a question for 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 Beth and 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 Opie. I think start with a uh, an email to staff and an open end of we have a meeting if, if you're and breaking you're breaking up i i got i don't know i've heard about every i heard I think, with an um, email mike, but after that mike if you could um mute again that'll help us yeah let me do it again there you go if if you could just put it put an email out to the staff uh, internally and then keep it open-ended if people need to reach out they can but i don't think uh i, I don't think you need to do a full-blown staff okay. meeting but, but i defer to that I, I, i'm good with that okay if no one has anything else i would like to hear from from ken All right. Um, so, I guess to to start answering Roger's question on you know what what's happened in other places that we've experienced, um, I think you've already hit a little bit of it. Um, my experience appointing someone that can sign documents, um, like in Jacksonville, uh, Barton, they both appointed like interim managers, whether that was another employee or one of the commissioners. That seemed to help because you occasionally will have stuff pop up that, that needs to have a signature. Um, I'm sure Beth can handle 99% of it, 
Uh, occasionally there's a, an odd thing you, you need to deal with. Um, I spent a little bit of time today talking to the other VEPSA members. Um, I'm sure you're aware of the line crew situation. Um, I'm not sure if you're fully aware of the situation there, but um, Orleans has been providing night and week on coverage. Um, they're covering like every fourth week. It just happens that this week is one where they're providing coverage. Um, so you have an Orleans uh, line worker who's handling outages on nights and weekends. Um, that ends Monday morning. <clears throat> Um, I talked to Morrisville, and they're willing to join that rotation. They'd been talking to Mike over the last couple of weeks, but had not reached an arrangement that they were both comfortable with. Um, Scott Johnstone indicated that he's going to ramp his crews up to have someone available starting Monday uh, to do the coverage as long as you are comfortable with him doing that. Um they would want, if this is, if they're going to continue for a longer term, they'd want to have something in writing as to what the expectations are. And he started to put that together. But for Monday, he's willing to do it, you know, just have someone show up and be available under the normal kind of mutual aid structure that they would normally do. So that would get us through next week uh, without too many issues. Um, I've also talked to Stowe. It's not not a VEPSA member, but that's the the next closest utility that has the the bandwidth to do something. Right. Um, and there, uh, Jackie Pratt's going to talk to her line crew and get back to me on Monday with what they think they can do. So um, we're trying to piece together coverage for outages at, at least at nights and weekends. Um, and then the open question from our side is is support needed during the day? Um, my understanding of, as of today is your, your first glass lineman's back to work uh, from his injury. Uh, that with the two apprentices may be able to get you through the daytime coverage. That's something we'll probably have to evaluate and, and decide where to go. Um, on Projects in particular, we're thinking of the Yellow Barn project, which has a very high state profile. Um, the VEPs of members across the board, Enosburg, Swanton, they've all said, you know, if you have specific projects that need to be done, they're happy to do a more formal support where they can send a crew down for a few days or a week and try to do that work if we can identify what needs to be done. So you have access to those crews to the extent you need them. Um, <clears throat> on the, the hydro in particular, um, I'll leave it to you, but what we've done in the past, Barton had a similar situation, um, and through a combination of Dave Gagney, who actually runs our project 10, um, but he has 30 years of hydro experience in his background, um, and the folks who run the Swanton hydro facility, they've quite often stepped in and tried to help move projects forward. So um, if Beth, Beth has access to the contracts, um, those folks may be able to come in and take a look at what's going on and at least figure out a path forward because um, they've, they've dealt with a lot of those contractors before. And it's the last item I've been working on today um, is trying to think about uh, more of an interim to buy you some time for going through a full hiring process. Um, I've got feelers out to uh, NEPA, Northeast Public Power, um, Hometown Connections. I've asked the VEPSA members if they have any any names. Um, Mike Highland down at NEPA is reaching out to a couple of folks. They're not municipal managers, but they're utility um, mid-management from Eversource who recently retired. Quite often those Eversource people will look for part-time, you know, retirement type work. And they're pretty good on the electric side, even though they don't understand really how municipals uh, operate. So for a short-term thing, they might be useful. Um, I, have I, any have, names? I have a name and I gave it to you, Lynn. 
Yeah. Um, I think you should call. This was Jim Fontaine. Have, have you worked with him? Uh, I have not. But I know he's worked with other uh, VEPSA members in the past, has very high regards from what I hear. So if that's someone that's interested, definitely worth talking to. I mean, it's, it it strikes me that that having an interim person is 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 important because we're going to be we need to be hiring line crew. We need to be negotiating a new union contract. Um, we've got the Wolcott project. Um, plus customer projects. I think most of the customer projects can be dealt with by Brian, but probably not all of them. Yeah, um, Morris, Morrisville also um, offered for what it's worth that if if they're estimating work, um, line extension, if you need more of the administrative support, then they're happy to help in that regard. Um, there's a lot of, you know, before you get to actual construction, there's steps you need to go through. The estimating, the yeah. yeah. And, and they're willing to fill in to the extent you need it. But I, I would agree. I mean, one of the first things is to get kind of an interim manager in who can start to triage what needs to happen. And, and hiring line workers, um, from what I'm understanding, is a pretty high priority and they're hard to find. Um most of the VEPSA members are down one or two at this point. So it's it's not something you're going to make one phone call and, and refill your <laughs> your staffing. It's going to take a little bit. And this is a, a bit of a pointed question, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it anyway. Yeah. Um, do you think that our loss of, of line crew it was because our compensation had become too low or do you think there were other reasons for that or do you have no idea um i have no direct knowledge i i have heard from people who have dealt with the line workers who left um that it was more an environmental issue than a compensation compensation issue. Do you do you think any of them might be interested in coming back? I believe that's possible. Um, I'm I'm just thinking these are people who know our system. Yeah. Um, and. I Honestly, that was Morrisville's comment is, you know, two folks who left Hardwick work for Morrisville now. Um, Scott Johnstone, the manager in Morrisville, said he, you know, one of those folks he could put back on the Hardwick system and on call Monday. Um, they already know the system. They know the issues you're dealing with, where the problems are likely to be. Um, so it's a pretty, pretty simple solution there. So how do we, how, what's the best way to move this process forward is it to talk with scott is it to talk with with jim fontaine um both of them um i mean if someone's going to be coming in as an interim i mean they probably have some insight into especially if it's somebody who's who's local yeah. um some insight into the process um i i would recommend at this point for what it's worth, um, I, I'd want you to tell me you're okay with having Morrisville do the coverage next week. Um, I can call Scott tonight and get the Monday coverage set up as long as there's an understanding you're okay with that. And then, and then I'd suggest moving to, um, if Jim Fontaine is a possible interim, having that conversation with him. Um, because if you can get that on board, then he can work with the VEPSA managers to figure out where you need support and where you don't and have a much more direct conversation than having me as the middleman. Yeah. You know, okay. Uh, so taking those piece by piece, 
I, I certainly would support um, having Morrisville step in next week and, and, and having Ken speak with Scott Johnston about that. Is there any other I thoughts agree. on that? Sounds great. Or any objection, Michael? No, I absolutely I would do that. Okay. So that that's a yes. And then what's who's the best person to get in touch with 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 Jim and then who should be meeting with him as an initial matter? And I'm I'm looking to Ken and Opie on I think somebody from I heard somebody from and then I it broke up. Somebody from the commissioners. Yeah. A commissioner needs to get in touch with them. Yeah. Okay. I'm I, I can certainly do that. Um if, do, if do we need to that. advertise it all before we look at hiring someone as an interim? Do we I, have like free hand or we have some public I would think we uh, for no, an interim no. position we have a free hand. It's for the full time position where we might want to be a little more careful. And it, I think uh, uh, Opie, it looked like you were nodding in agreement. You don't need to advertise. It's an interim position. Yeah. Um, if you could send me contact details for 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 Jim, I I I can get in touch with him. Okay. I'd like to in, ask a follow up question as far as getting more still here on Monday. Can someone contact Brian for it or because he's been trying to coordinate that as well. He needs to be in on that to know what's going on. Yeah, if you can send me Brian's phone number. Okay, I will I will call him. Yeah, my, my message to Scott will be that the commission's final with Marshall starting Monday and they, they should coordinate with Brian to get that set up and then. Yeah, they probably got Brian's phone number as well. Yeah. Yeah. Work but I, I can give Brian a call and give him a heads up that that's will be happening. Okay. And can I tell um, Paul Fix that Roger will be in touch with him? Yeah. What was that one? Uh, Paul Fix, the Gazette. Oh, uh, sorry. You can be in touch with them. I should have put the, the two and two together there. Okay. So um, for Paul Fix, why don't you do this? When you email Paul Fix, just put me in a CC. Okay. And that'll facilitate us connecting. And, no. and recognize, of course, I'm, I'm not going to have any much to say. In other words, I won't give him a lot of material to work with. He'll have to. Yeah, that's, I think I'll just send him an email saying that direct all inquiries to you. And Fine. you can. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Opie. Yeah, no problem. I think I have my March. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anything else that we um, need to talk about today? Just to let you know, we did. I, I talked to Lynn yesterday, and um, we've VEPSA is managing the IT systems behind the scenes, um, putting the cybersecurity and all that. And we have locked Mike out of all of the accounts at this point. As far as uh, he doesn't have access to any of the systems anymore. So yeah. just so you're aware. Yep. Thank you. That's good. Good. Go ahead. Right. Go ahead, Roger. Well, I was going to ask Lynn, but but I didn't mean to interrupt you. The um, it, before we wrap up, let's have Ken go just go through his experiences with other transitions, um, and just any lessons learned or observations. I'm sure that's sort of behind all of his suggestions so far, but it might be good for us to just hear 
whatever there is. I'm going to go now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so we've, we've done two very similar situations in Barton and Jacksonville. Um, pretty identical with the, the manager uh, leaving with no real notice and uh, having line, line crew uh, field problems, um, trying to call everything together. So I think getting an interim in quickly is is almost is crucial. So it's good to taking that step. Um, I think Jacksonville didn't, and it and it really hampered. Uh, you know, they appointed me as the interim. I was trying to manage Jacksonville from Waterbury, and that's was a bit of a challenge, uh, to say the least. Because um, things do pop up that you wouldn't realize where you're, you're going to need some signature on some document and and having that done ahead of time with the authority documented is, is quite helpful. Um, <clears throat> the, the biggest challenge, I think, especially in your situation where you where Beth is around and can the, the office operation is in pretty good hands. Um, the field coordination will be much more of a challenge than you you expect. Uh, when you're trying to coordinate three or four utilities to to deal with outages, uh, and that's the hardest part. You know, it's it's not planning the projects or the line extensions, stuff like that. Those you can tend to mobilize and get done. It's when a snowstorm or a thunderstorm comes through and you've got outages going on. Um, we saw this pretty pretty heavily in Barton where just making sure the call center has the right contact information for the on-call person. Um, that can become quite a challenge when you would think it's simple. It, it tends not to be. Um, making sure the handoff from one on-call person to the next gets handled properly. You know, when, when it's your own line workers and they're handing off to someone they're working with every day, it's pretty simple. Uh, when you're going from Morrisville to Orleans to, you know, Stowe, potentially that handoff can get muddled fairly quickly. Um, the other thing that we didn't talk about yet, but, but will come up is the make ready work um, for the communications folks. Um, I'm not clear on where Hardwick is, but I know most of the VEPs and members are getting inundated with requests for make ready work. And there's a, a fixed timeline on getting that work done. Um, or you can start to run into issues with the providers. So as we're doing the triage on what needs to happen with the line crews, that's something you want to keep in mind. Um, that may ha have to take precedence over some other projects. Um, The hydro, um, I don't think we've been in the same situation as you are where the plant's down and you're literally trying to reconstruct it. Um, but we have had a, a number of cases where we had to call on outside support. So I, you know, I would not hesitate to, to lean on some of the other members that have hydro. You know, Morrisville could help a little bit. They don't really have a, a full-time dedicated crew. So um, their Swanton, I think, would would be the best alternative, and and they're more than willing to to help other parties. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, the question there, Ken, would be, you know, do we need um, some arms and legs and support of, by people who understand hydro to actually do work, and or do we need um, a project manager because I think Mike was the project manager. He's the yep. so um, and my depending who we get as an interim and then also who we recruit. This project has to be managed really continuously now for it to come back online. Right, right. Need, and then so we, as of today, this week, we have no pro, no one project managing, um, and hopefully 
Well, what we got to determine is if we're just waiting for vendors to deliver things, maybe we can survive. Yeah. But if if we're supposed to be coordinating, doing things are being delivered, they have to be scheduled. We need a project manager. So maybe what you're suggesting is like Swan might have the depth where they could have a perhaps somebody at that level, and Morrisville might have some hands, arms, and legs. Yeah, I I think um, based on what I know, what I'm thinking is you first need somebody who can look at the contracts and the status and really figure out where you are. Um, and then ultimately you're probably going to need a click of the works type person who's, as you, as you describe a project manager working for you. Um, I don't know that Swanton would be have enough bandwidth to manage the project day to day on the ground. Um, but that's, we could work with whoever you end up with for an interim to see if VEPS itself, Dave Gagne, for example, who's, you know, technically works for me, uh, manages project 10, but he's got, we, we can flex his time quite a bit, um, to provide yeah. support there. Um, would you, Lynn, would you and the other commissioners entertain maybe until and unless we have someone with the capabilities we identify, maybe have Dave Gagne just come in right away to look with Beth at the contracts, the documents, sort of make an assessment of the project needs. I think that makes I think that makes sense because we just don't know where things are at and and we could be on some critical path item yeah. right now and not even know it. Mm -hmm. uh, so is that, within, is that reasonable, Ken? If you if you got us asking you, yeah, for, and then we trust you'll only give him to us as much as you can spare him. But if we yeah. could have him right away, that would free be at least it help Beth sort through what we got. And yeah, I'll talk. I'll talk to Dave over the weekend and uh, see if we can get a schedule together and coordinate with Beth. It's fine. Awesome. And um, a question, Lynn, with respect to just that project, but it might hold true for some of the other projects with long lead items. Is it, um, it seems like it'd be good preemptively with key vendors for somebody, maybe Beth, you know, to just say, key vendor for your information. If, you know, your contact was Mike Sullivan, he's no longer with Hardwick Electric. Um, and if, if they're, you know, I'm informing you of that so you can contact me if you need to talk with anyone. And we'll, as we, as we replace Mike, we'll give you further information, but for now, contact me. That I'm worried about a vendor leaving message after message for Mike. And we need yeah, to preempt. Yeah, that's, well, that's, that's, a, well, that's a question also. I mean, on the, first of all, in terms of Roger's suggestion, are you comfortable with, send, you know, with, with letting, Vendors know, Beth. Can't I can't hear. I, I, I can do that. That's okay. great because Beth, you pay everybody, so you kind of know. <clears throat> you know every. You know how to reach them. Put it that way. <laughs> you but, may not know. You may not have the answers that they'll come back and ask you subsequently. But at least you get the get the initial message across. Um, a question for Ken regarding uh, communication with Mike on his emails. Is his email shut down or is there a response going out for someone trying to send an email to him? I just I just took a note to check. My understanding is his password was changed. <clears throat> so we're still capturing those emails. I'm not clear as to whether there's a reply going back to that or not. Oh, that's that's good if you yeah. can. Yeah, but I mean, one question, of the... normally what we do is we then designate someone to forward them to. So it'd be, you normally, you'd, if the CEO left, you'd forward him to the CFO, you know, something like that. So it'd be, that's sort of business logic, but. Yeah, well, I think right now, if they could be forwarded to Beth and if if you can take a look at them, Beth, and if you think that, um, you know, the commissioners need to see something or hopefully we'll have some, <clears throat> Know, someone in an interim position pretty quickly but um in you know in the meantime um 
And if I'll you know, try. <laughs> yeah, I mean, give it your best shot. Um, but but that also made me wonder about phone, um, and and voicemail messages, and and Mike had a cell phone also. What's the situation with those? I'm not sure about the cell phone. I'll have to check on that one. Okay, because uh, I mean the cell phone. Most, most people contacted him via this via the cell phone. They didn't contact him too often through the, his extension at the office. Was was it was it an HED supplied cell phone? I think the number is, but I'm not sure if the phone itself is. I've got to but look into that. But are we paying for the service? We are paying for the service. It's my understanding. Then you need to, yeah, you need to discontinue that. Just that the needs, way. Yeah. Work. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not as worried about the physical phone, but we shouldn't be paying for the service. Okay. But I guess the concern that I have is if there are people who are contacting him who we need to know, you know, where, where they're really trying to, where it's something that, that HED needs to know about. Yeah. Um, well, that's, I, I think that's, really, the benefit. Really need... that's the benefit of her, of Lynn, of Lynn, of having Beth reach out to everybody and say he's no longer with the company, with the Hardwick Electric Department. Yeah, I'm just wondering if there's anybody where there isn't an invoice, but, I, you know, we're not going to necessarily know about that. Um... We will eventually. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we'll get we'll get it eventually. I've tried really hard since I've been here to redirect any type of email invoices to a general email invoice email address we have now and get them away from individual people. Yeah, right. Uh, and I'm purchase sure orders, still... purchase orders would have you know would give you. I'd probably look at purchase orders in addition to invoices. I wasn't just yeah. thinking about about um, invoices necessarily. I mean, clearly that would would be one one item, but but the other is if if there's something there's some issue, some situation that somebody's yeah. getting in touch with Mike about, leaving a message on his phone on the cell phone that we we when i say we i mean collectively hed needs to know about um, and and we're not getting the message um i don't know if there's a way to transfer the number to an hed number where that could be monitored uh, to an hed phone that could be monitored or something or where a message could be put on on that number saying please call you know the office or something i'll try to research that i just don't know the answer to it yeah i yeah. obviously none of us do so kim harris in our shop handles our cell phones i'll run it i'll run it by her um yes. i'm not sure if there's a way short of canceling that line and starting a new one um yeah but kim kim probably would have a good idea what's possible so i'll ask her and, and pass along what i hear um beth do you work um do you have re other uh, a sort of normal workflow with vepsa so do you do you know who ken has in the vepsa organization who could be helpful to you already you have your list yes Excellent. Great. Yes. Ken, were there were there other things that you were because we keep we keep interrupting you? That, no, that's okay. We, you're getting really good everything. Yeah. You're making me think of stuff as we go too. So um, the other other item, it's not critical or time sensitive, but um, just replacing Mike on the VEPSA board at some point when you decide what to do. Um, that's need to be vacant until you make a decision. Can, can is that you... an issue? Yeah, is that an issue for you? You know, it's... for, you know, because we could always say when we have an interim that the interim person's on your board if you need it. Yeah. Or we could just wait till we get a permanent. 
it, it's it's not gonna harm us either way. It's just um, you don't have an alternate either. So um, and right now, part of it will be vacant. You won't really have any say in, until you decide to appoint somebody new. I, I guess there were there were there were two questions for me. One was having say. I didn't even know that there was such a thing as an alternate. We I don't think we were ever told that we could have an alternate. Oh. Um, I not, that's not I'm not faulting Bepsa on that. Um, but the other is that from time to time, Mike would come back from having been at a VEPSA board meeting with information that he'd be conveying to us. And, and if we don't have somebody going to the meetings, we're not getting that information. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if there's a way for us to get that short of having somebody go to the meetings or... Um, there's a couple of ways. When we put out a packet, um, certainly can send that to Beth and have her forward it on. Um, there's minutes of every meeting so that we could pass those along directly. Um, so getting you the information that we're talking about and the conversation that happened, I don't think is such a problem. It's just you won't be in the room as the decisions are being made. It's really what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, my, my main concern is that if there's something that we need to know, especially something that might be time sensitive, Yep. Um, or that, you know, that's coming down the road that we need to be thinking about. We need a way to know about that. That's all. I'll set it up so that um, <clears throat> you're, you know, Beth is getting the, the packets and the minutes. And then if there's anything that um, is time sensitive or requires input from the members, I mean, I can always attend your meetings and have the conversation if we have to. <laughs> Great. And we do have a meeting on Monday at four, which would be great if you could be yeah. there. I was going to mention I've I've got a uh, conflict four to five, but I could be there after that. Okay, great. Um, does anybody have anything else at this point? I guess the only can you I... hear me? Yeah. Oh, you can. Okay. So just two quickies. His email should have an auto response to whoever sends him an email that he's not with uh, HED anymore. It shouldn't be just they send emails and they die on the line. It's easy to set up a response that tells people, you know, he's no longer here. Please contact the office. That's yeah. one thing. The other is I tried calling what I think was his phone. I don't know if that's the HED phone. And it said it wasn't taking any voicemails. So he may have done it himself if that's the HED phone. I don't know what the number is. It, just, the, uh, he he changed, well, yeah, he, my, Michael, he changed phones. I, my sense of time isn't great, but I want to say maybe a month or two ago. Um, because I had, I had gotten that message some time ago and then he had said no, that to use some different number. So I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, it, it, it may be, you might be talking about the newer number. I just don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But the email thing should be easy. Yeah, I uh, agree. So who's gonna who's gonna is that something you can do, Beth? Or is that something that needs to be managed at VEPSA oversight of the email? I would hope that VEPSA could do it. If they cannot, maybe Kim could walk me through how to do it. Yeah, I'll reach out to Kim. She should yeah. be able to set it up pretty easily for Thanks. you. Thanks, Kim. Yeah. Um, I guess my other question is, does Mike still have access to the building? He has turned in his keys. Okay. And um, the keys to the and, and have we changed the password on the computer? Uh, he doesn't have a computer. He turned no in his computers as well. I'm, I'm sorry, I could, you broke up again? He turned in his computers. He doesn't even have one. Right, but that co that computer. Do we have? Do we know what the password was so that that oh, HD has it, access to whatever was on it? it? It's a general computer that anyone can log into with their user. I, I'm using it right now. Oh, okay. So yeah, we, right. we can get into it. Okay. Yeah. And it, it's pass his password on the network 
his access to all of your computer programs, that password was changed after he re resigned. So Kim has changed the password and she, she still has a Mike Sullivan account, but with her password, so he can't get into it. Okay. I guess the only other thing that, that I would ask, because I don't know about others, but I could not get down everything that Ken was saying. Uh, <laughs> and there's there was an awful lot of really good information in there. Um, and I'm just wondering, Beth, you know, it doesn't need to be pretty or anything, but if, if you could have somebody in the office maybe put together a transcript, um, or Roger, you're looking pained. Or you think we, I just, I just don't want to lose any of that or. Yeah, well, we've got it recorded as well, too. So yeah, we, we do have it. We do have it recorded. Maybe we just leave it at that. Okay. We can compare notes. H hesitant to say anything, but I, I know there are some of the AI tools where you can take a recording and turn it into a transcript. So maybe that's something we can look at as well without having to have somebody write it down <laughs> as we're going. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, um, okay. Anybody have anything else? Well, I think secondary to all the issues we have to resolve, I'm just wanting leaving with no notice has anyone looked into what the financial ramifications of that are in terms of what we owe him? I, I don't think anybody, I mean, I, if, he, if he resigned, we owe him for whatever he was owed up till the day that he resigned. So vacation pay, sick pay, all that? Um, is not is, do you have a contract? Does he have a, is he working under a contract? Uh, I don't, you know, we, that's something, Beth, if you can look in the office and see, I, I was trying to recall whether in fact, there was a lot of discussion and even some drafts of a written contract, but I don't recall whether one was actually ever finalized and signed. Um, that's, it, that's non-existent that I would follow in personnel policy. I'm sorry. I again. I I got. I couldn't make that. Uh, if if there's no contract, I would follow the personnel policy. Yeah. No. I I I think what sick pay. I know. I'm pretty sure gets paid. Um. And I don't know about vacation. You know, outstanding vacation. The other the other thing is also. I think we need to check and see what happened if there's a difference with as, as I think this is where you were going Michael that where no notice was given and whether that affects whatever is paid yeah that was my question well, for us to look at Roger if you're saying something we can't hear you no I'm trying to figure out how to write my little note oh <laughs> You, you, that's an ugly thing to show you. I'm, yeah, I'm trying to sound out my sentence. Um, okay. Um, if people think of things, obviously we will continue this discussion on 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 Monday. Um, and. Uh, Opie, if you could send me Jim Fontaine's contact information, I will try and actually get in touch with him with the hope that I can, if not, you know, speak with him over the weekend, get him first thing Monday morning and, and hopefully meet with him. Um, so, um, yeah. Thank you for the guidance, Ken. Thank you very much. Happy to help do whatever we can. And 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 Opie and Beth, thank you both. Um, if no one has anything, is there a motion to adjourn? I so move. Second. Second. Uh, hearing no opposition. Since any opposition, none. Okay. Um, 
we are adjourned at 4.10 p.m. <laughs>